Hallelujah. Wave your hands to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's give God the praise. Let's give him the worship. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. Thank you, Father. You are great. Yes, you are. Holy One. Oh. You walk upon the sea, you raise the dead. Are we alive in the church today? Come on, let's go. Are you ready, majesty, mighty God? Thank you, Father. Everything, everything about you. hands to the king of kings and the lord of lords everything concerning him is great great and mighty god great and mighty with more than what we think say or do wonderful god everlasting father ancient of days he is the beginning and the ending the alpha and the omega let's give him worship let's give him praise open your mouth and worship your maker let's worship our maker none like can be like him we worship your glorious name Rakato boria gada bosh, take la gada gada gala bala bosh, le prakosa takaya gaba. My Maker, I worship you. Everlasting Father, I bow before you. My Lord, I worship your name. I give you praise, I give you honor. You are more than enough. Oh God, I have no replacement for you, my Father. Me se te ke li braga la gala bosh, te ke li akota gala gala ba, re ke te ke li braga la gala gaba. The one that is above all we worship you thank you my father we worship your name we worship your name thank you father 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 Mashata kala braga sata galabo, lika toke le brake sete ke la gada kala braga bas, lenge teke li braga sata kaya balabo, langona koloria gado chaka ya raba. Let's be the name of the Lord forever. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Everything about you is great. Everything about you is great, Father. When it comes to healing, you are great. No man can heal like you. I feel the presence of the Almighty God right now. My father, are we talking about the code? You are great in it. Are we talking about the son? You are great in it. My father, there are so many things we don't even know that you are even great, my father. When you want to move like a wings, my father, you are great. Mm. Thank you, father. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. Your greatness can never be compared. Ah, ah. Father, are you not the one that died for my sin? Ah, ah. Father, a sinless man. Hey, you came and looked at me and said, Don't worry, I am going to take your guilt to myself. Is that not a great man? Ah, ah. What my parents cannot do for me, my father. You are doing it, O oh Lord. And you are never tired. You are great, father. In my generation, what they have never been able to achieve, my father. Daddy, you gave it to me on a platter of gold. Daddy, you are great. When they say the road is closed, Father, where they say it's closed, you have the key everlasting in your hand and you open the door. Father, you are great. You that walk upon the sea, my father, you are great. Hmm. You that call the death of Lazarus after four days back to life, daddy, you are great. Shakata my father many people alarm cannot wake them again my father lord you wake me up my lord you are great ah, what kill others my father is what i am using as a twin seek my daddy you are great thank you father daddy you are too great and that's why they call you daddy daddy, daddy you are wonderful you are excellent you are everlasting Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shikeno, Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah Roy, Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah El Shaddai. Daddy, you are great. I bow before you, my father. I bow before you, my father. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. Thank you, Father. Excellent Redeemer, we worship your name. You are worthy, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ibuchuko yedima, ibuchuko yedike, ibuhal fanhan omega mo, afan omega. Somebody sing it out. Malinte Nabu Yakanti Nasi Ibuchi Ibuchu Kuyedima. Like, can we just sing it together? Ibuchu Kuyedima. Thank you, Father. Oh, 
Thank you, Father. Yes, my Father. Thank you, Father. Unto you, my Father. Thank you, Father, Lord. We worship your name. Okay. Thank you, Father. Now, brethren, I want you to just look at the greatness of the Almighty God. Thank you, Father. Listen to me. Can we just go down? Now, listen. In my closeness of my worship for the Lord, there was something that came up unto me. And I look at it. I look at, I compare it all the one I have ever met, every woman being I ever met, their greatness. How where God has put them, brethren, none of them were able to solve my situation. But there is a God that came unto me and sought it out for me. Thank you, Father. Sometimes when I tell people, you don't know where I'm coming from. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you, Father. Daddy, thank you so much. Ah, Father, thank you so much. I am the fatherless man that is always having a father. Ah, Kabiesi, thank you, Jesus. Kabiesi, thank you, Father. Kabiesi, thank you, Father. I am the motherless man that always have a mother that speaks on me. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, even when they take their honor away, my Father, you remain standing for me, my Lord. You are the God of the, of the God, that one that has no God. But because you are the God that standeth forever. Many men has made themselves to be God on the land, my Father, but you are the God that reigneth forever. My healer, my helper, my defender, my advocate, my speaker, my voice, my provider, my protector, my ye oh God of heaven, my Lord, you are God and all, you are all in all for me. When the Lord are close, my Father, you remain the Lord, my Lord. Father, I exalt your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. I worship you, my Father, and I worship your majesty forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we are worshiping. Thank you, Father. Before I allow you to sit down, just a second, I want you to just look unto God and say, Thank you, Jesus. Just open your mouth and say, Father, thank you, Lord. Open your mouth. Genuinely, it's a costly one. Just give it to him. He owns it. All of you washing us everywhere, just give it to God. He's the one that owns it all. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything, for everything. I honor your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we have given him worship. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated in his presence. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Before I go ahead, I want to share a testimony of one of my son in the Lord standing far away in another country. Something happened to him. I think I shared that little testimony in the on, online during our title minutes with the Lord. In fact, most of the testimony that comes there, I just received them sometimes and I I told me, he called me, he said, Pastor, I want you to share it in the church. I, I said, but this one, he said, yes, Pastor, please. 
let the people know what God has done in my life. If it is possible, I will have jumped down to that place and see this God that can do a thing in a twinkle of an eye. He was passing out. When I mean passing out, life was going out of him gradually. What was the reason? What happened in the book of John to that woman with the issue of blood was happening to a man. And it was anytime he goes to the toilet, he was excreting blood. Praise God. You know, instead of the excrete to be like normal, what me and you do, his own will turn to blood. And that's what happens. That means if he goes to the toilet three times in that means quantity of what he has created will be the quantity of the blood that will leave him. And he was going out. And he was just going out like that. All of a sudden, he went, now the, and he went to the hospital. He first called anyway. And I told him, I'm not a medical doctor. You are far away in a country. What are we going to do? Go to the hospital. Go and meet your doctor and amen. I said, the Bible never asks us not to go to a doctor. Praise God. The Bible never asks us that we should not take our medicine. Amen. If you hear from me that I have divine healing, glory be to God. You cannot compare yourself and me. And you don't know whether Pastor Sonia also takes medicine. Praise the Lord. It is still divine healing. Now, is somebody on that? Do you understand me now? Yes, sir. So I told him, I said, come and go. And he went to the doctor. They consulted a lot. They, trans they took him to another place for another, some, some tests again. And they told him, man, we've seen nothing in your blood. Everything about you is complete. You are okay. You are all right. Uh -uh. In their presence, he went to where? He went to doc I mean, to the, to the toilet. <laughs> there were blood also. He told them, I have not flushed it. Come and see the blood. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he knew that, yes, things were going outside that. After about three or four days, he had to call me. He said, if I hear that he's gone, then glory be to God. I said, ah, what are you saying? He said, because... I am, the more, the way I go to the toilet, that's the way the blood is coming out. I became afraid also. And I said, what's the Lord saying? He said, I'm not hearing from the Lord. Praise God. Okay. We pray together. And I book him on an appointment for prayer. Glory be to God for some certain time. And we prayed. And uh, by the grace of the Lord, some of we call water, it is not an ordinary water. We prayed on it. I quite understand it's not a system in the redeemed Christian church of God. It's a grace. I always say it. It's a grace that God has given unto me. That when I pray to water, it's not ordinary water. I even told me anything I decree on it, it is so. And I said, well, this is what you are giving unto me. I am giving it to you. If you take this blood today, I use it as a way to wait against the blood in your body. And he took the blood of Jesus Christ. After 24 hours, I discovered my phone was, something was disturbing me. So I needed to pick his call. And he was shouting and screaming and screaming. He said, Pastor, I waited for over 24 hours. And I've been going to the toilet. It is extremely, I don't know what I am getting now. Because what the doctors could not do. Ordinary, he said, is it an ordinary water that I drank and I am not shitting, I'm not excreting blood again. He said, I should tell the church, anywhere I go, I should share the testimony to everywhere. That he's ready to go to every church is because he knew that he was about to go out of the world. I pray to God of heaven. I've helped me to share the testimony. The testimony is permanent in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You can imagine when you see death coming. But there is a God that heals it. I pray in the name of the Lord this year, I will not miss any one of you. Amen. And you will never miss me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Except that is transfer. If there is transfer, we have to go. That we can miss each other. But that we are still living, we will live to the glory of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Is somebody ready for tonight? I mean this hour. The Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Quickly, I want to share with you God of Elijah. The God of Elijah. You can get that around writing down. God of Elijah. Who is the God of Elijah? I can answer you with all faith. The almighty God, my God, is the God of Elijah. Now, quickly, 
God is the one that is supreme. He is supreme is the being that is over all. He is the one that is called the almighty God. He is the almighty God because he's mightier than anything that is mighty. And we call him the almighty God. Who is Elijah? Elijah is a major prophet in the land of Israel. In fact, it's, the Bible never describes how wonderful the family is coming from. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 1, we were able to know where Elijah was coming from, from the family. He was from the family of the church, but 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1. And the Bible says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitant of Gilead, said unto... That was what we can discuss about, about Elijah. And that's what we can know about him. But this man, on, who is not... Paraventure, the family was not known in the land. Paraventure is not coming from a family that is well to do, unlike Elisha. Who's when he, the call of God come on top, upon Elisha, he has the opportunity... To go and kill, I mean, well-established family. Amen. Where, where Elijah was coming from. But unlike Ab, Elijah, Paraventure is coming from a poor family. Paraventure, his family was not known. But that was not the condition for God to call a man. Praise God. The God of Elijah. That's not where I'm going. Elijah was known for the fire he carried. Elijah was known for instant answers to prayer. Thank you, Father. Elijah was known when he make a demand that is a response instantly. That God will be your God. Amen. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 2. 2 Kings, chapter 2. If you start the reading from verse 8. Thank you, Father. Is somebody in the church today? All right. 2 Kings, chapter 2, from verse 8. And the Bible made us to understand. The scriptures say, now Elijah took his mantle, ran it up, and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that. So that the two of them crossed over on a dry land. I want to take this as a contest. Thank you, Father. After the call of Elijah, Elisha, he became a follower of the master. His master called Elijah. They were going and he caught a time that the master was about to take him up. And this man has been well tutored under the ministry of his master. He has been trained up as a prophet also in the land. He was about to take the mantle. He was about to come into the office of his master called Elijah. Because at that time, even has been trained up as, an, as a prophet. He has learned the tutelage. He has learned the precept. He has learned everything when it comes to the office of a prophet. Anywhere they go to as they were going... Sons of the prophet, they were in the ministry of the school also. We always tell him, do you know your master, Elijah, will soon be taken off? Because the reason was that, how, the question is, how do they know? They were students in the ministry of prophet, prophetic also. And they always say, we always tell them, don't worry, I know. But that's not where I'm going. The God of Elijah. Why do I come up with this topic? Because it's the God of Elijah that answered it by fire. Why do we say he answered by fire? He answered instantly. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who can call upon the God of Elijah and he will answer? He's a man that his heart is so pure. He's a man that his heart is so connected to him. He's a man that is every 24 hours you are, it's like if you are on the altar. He's a man that will never speak guilt of his of his brethren. is a man that is ready to do the will of the father. The God of Elijah. 
How do we talk about God of Elijah and fire? You remember what happened upon Mount Camel. Oh God, the contest. And Elijah told them, come on, we want to know the true God. And that's where the God of Elijah comes up. We want to know the faithful God. We want to know the God that is, that is, that is reigning. And the prophet of God gathered themselves together, over 400 people. And there was a man that stand and said, yes, I represent God here. I am an ambassador of God here. And when you are an ambassador, the, your principal, what your principal hold, you can act in the capacity of your principal. For example, the ambassador of your country in this country that we are, he can represent your president anywhere. He can speak on behalf of your country. He can do everything on behalf of, your, of, of, your, of the president of your country. It will be time as if it is your country that is doing it. Therefore, Elijah entered into the office of heaven and he was about to do what God can do, even if he's pres present. And that is the reason why. When you carry the fire of Elijah, oh my God, you operate in the dimension of a fire <laughs> because God takes no for an answer. Thank you, Father. When the prophet of God come on your way, you take no for an answer. I see a woman and a man that is angry when they get to the realms of the spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I see an unstoppable woman being that are seated here when they get to a place that matters. I see somebody who can never be stopped by the gimmicks of men and by the collaboration of the government. I see somebody who believes in himself and says, I believe in God because I know God and God knows me. Thank you, Father. Is somebody alive in the church here? No intimidation of King Ahab can stop the man called Elijah from manifesting fire. Can you imagine 400 people gathered together and you are the only one that wants to speak on the earth of God? You are not seeing 400 people. You are seeing chicken. But then when you look at the back, you are seeing the big God that stands beside you and say, come on my son, speak on my behalf. Oh my God. Thank you, Father. This one is not by boasting. Oh, let, me, let me leave it that. Let me leave that one so that we, we, I can get to where we want to get to today. The God of Elijah. The God of Elijah. Thank you, Father. He was on the mountain. Every other one that called themselves prophet were roasted by fire. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you are leaving the presence, the church today, anyone that represents Baal in your life, Shakata Kariya Katapakata, Rekete Kele Katakoriya Kataba, even we roast them by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. How can you assess this God of Elijah? Brethren, you must be a genuine worshiper of him. The Bible says inhabiting the places of his people. Can you imagine a scenario where God just, you are just worshiping God and God decided to come down? And then he look at you and look at the environment that you are. He look at you and say, I don't think I have to go back because you have, give, you have served him better food than where he's coming from. Have you ever imagined that? And that's the reason why you see some people, they carry the presence of anywhere they go, God goes with them. Because what? They satisfy him. And they know that if they, he knows that if I leave you, you I'm, I can't get what you are giving unto me. And that's how God, oh my God, if you think in that dimension, you will see God manifesting everywhere you are, everywhere you go. Thank you, Father. Let me share this testimony for somebody who can believe it. Hallelujah. Somebody was shot in the dream. And all of a sudden, and they were looking for everywhere in a village. And they, I was transferred from a very big church that time. And that's redeemed for you. They transfer us anyhow. We thank God. That's, that's what gives strength. So they took us to a village. And thank God the church of God grew so much there. And by because of the department that belongs to. And they, they were looking for me everywhere. And they said, please, let's get this man. The woman was shot in the dream with a local gun. You know the local gun. You can't say you don't know local guns. Every one of us come from the village. Praise God. You are now in Europe. Some of us are, we don't even know who is. God have mercy in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for yourself now. Amen. So the woman said, I was shot with a local gun. I said, eh? 
Take her to the hospital. And they did a lot of, you know, I don't know what they call it, um, to see what is in. And they could not see any of the shadow. Praise God. The woman said, Pastor, seven, the thing were so small, small like this. I've not used it. I'm not a gun carrier. Amen. Praise God. The bullet. Is it bullet? Okay. And uh, the more hours the thing stays in her body, the more the thing was getting what? Swelling up. Praise God. So when they were, they, they, so it came to our house, I just, I don't know whether we were doing something somewhere. I was just enjoying myself. We have nowhere to go. The only thing we know is to just to go to church and come back. Just on full time for God. Amen. It was so sweet that time because nobody was paying us salary. Amen. We did it only for God and we enjoy the fullness of God. <laughs> Praise God. Brethren, try him and taste. You will discover that he is good. Praise God. I got to the place, one of our ministers' house. I said, ah, mama. She was covered. I said, when did you start? Have you changed religion? Because she dressed as if she was from the other religion. And when they opened her up, I discovered the, the right hand swelled up. Said, How come? They explained. Brethren, the God of Elijah answered by fire. Oh, my God. It is good. I am telling you this one so that you will know how to carry the presence of God anywhere you go. Thank you, Father. I, I, I was asking the leaders that are there. Sir, why are you looking for me? You are our leader. Why, what is he said, no. This one is reserved for somebody like you. Amen. You didn't reserve money for me. You didn't reserve promotion for me. You reserved this one for me. Praise God. Thank you, Father. I said, let us pray. And we started praying. And as every one of us gathered there, we were praying. Those things were coming out one by one. They were coming out one by one. When he got to see, I said, well, glory, let's share. He said, he said, pastor, they were seven in my hand. The remaining one must come out. Thank you, Father. When the Lord is, when you carry him and he, and he carry you, brethren, you are unstoppable anywhere. Mind you, I am not saying one thing or the other cannot come. But even in the tribulation that you are passing through, you see the almighty God in your life. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that was the reason why I just I said, how can somebody shot you in the dream? And then in the physical realm, you came out with the shot, I mean with the bullet in your hand. I begin to imagine which kind of thing we have in Africa like this. God of heaven and earth. Praise God. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The God of Elijah answer by fire. Answer instantly. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now they told, they told Elijah, Elijah, do you know? Your master will soon be taken over. You say, yes, I know. Don't worry yourself. I know. Huh. The Bible says, at every point in time, Elijah will look at the young boy and say, Elisha, go back. Because very, very soon, something is about, is anywhere you go, we are going together. Brethren, you don't fail to follow God. Even at that, your disadvantage, you must continue to follow him. He is ever faithful and ever good. There are some of us that have been tested by God. We have failed him. May you come back to him in full in the name of Jesus Christ. There are so many ways you failed God. And there are so many ways he has tested me and you. <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, that's not for today. Thank you, Father. They got to Jordan, brethren. The Bible made us to understand. Second Kings that was given unto us. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 8. The scriptures say, Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up together, and struck the water and it was divided this way and that the scripture made us to understand i said the two of them they do what they cross over to the city i mean to the to on the grand ground the two of them cross over as they cross over brethren the teacher say when they cross over in verse 9 elijah said to elisha now that we have crossed over nobody is seeing us the jordan we are over across the jordan now why is it that you are following me in verse 9? 
Now, ask what I may do for you. Huh. Something instant was about to happen. Ask what I may do for you. Brethren, when it comes to the place of your prayer, don't fail to, don't ask for bread and brother. Don't ask for something that will perish. For example, that the other day we say, ask anything from the Lord. Just ask for one thing and I will now be asking for money. Me, asking for money. For what? <laughs> Thank you, Father. I have never asked for money. To ask for money, what do I want to do with money? Money. <laughs> Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You don't ask for something that will perish. Huh. You don't ask for something that the president of a nation has. You ask for something that men does not carry. You ask for something that will make men to sort you out. Ah, thank you, Father. If because you are in one problem or the other and you are asking for solution for a problem, you, are, you ask for something that place demand on your destiny. In your closest time when you are asking, don't give me brethren, don't seek for what perishes. I'm a, let, let me tell you this one. You must be able to read your scripture very well to know that there are some things that have been settled for you by God. We place demand of them and bring them to actualization. But eventually, your mind is still shaking. And you look at it that some things are not coming up the way scripture says it is. Then you enforce them by the reason of prayer. Is, do somebody understand? There are some things that have been ordained for you to enjoy. Ordained for me to enjoy. They are not part of your list of prayer. They come into the list of your prayer because you see them that they are not coming to manifestation. And you need to demand them on your nails. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because, for example, death has no right to challenge you. And all of a sudden, you are beginning to dream, dream, and, and uh, you are feeling, and you need to place the demand on the place of prayer. Father, it is written concerning me. I shall not die. That's the, what the Bible says. I can't die. And you place the demand of it. The money that you are praying for, brethren, is a fact that once you set your priorities life, that the system God has put in place to bless your life. That's the reason why you must not stop reading the Bible. Studying your scripture. And align yourself according to the scripture. Don't deceive yourself when it comes to Christianity. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brethren, the prayer we pray, we allow the devil to know this is what has been written. No go area. Thank you, Father. Is somebody, do somebody understand me now? The Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. The Bible says in verse 9, Ask what you want. Elijah said. And Elisha replied to him and said, Okay, daddy, if you want me to ask anything I want. He was not asking for the house. But eventually Elijah has a house. He was not asking for the property Elijah left behind. He was not asking for, he knew the man would be going. Elijah would be going. He must have left so many things on the land. By the means of ministration. After all, he was the one that was carrying his bag. He was the one that was pouring water on his hand. But he said, come on. There is something that I can, you cannot give to your children. That, that there is something that is inside you that nobody can touch. It's only anyone that can follow you to this place. And I discovered nobody is here. I placed the demand on it. The double portion. It is not even only one thing. He is asking for the double. That means by the dimension of the asking of Elisha. Elisha was saying, apart from the one you can release, I place a demand in heaven to double it and give it to me. Because at that time, that man cannot double it. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Thank you, Father. Brethren, when you are asking, don't ask for something that perishes. The man was saying, I have the double portion of what you are carrying. That is, once it's as, as you are releasing it, let everyone tap into it. And, and the man said, okay, you have asked for a hard thing. It is hard, number one. Do you want me to let you know? Number one, it is hard. Because I can release what I have. You remember what the Bible said? When Moses was about, when Moses' ministry was getting to a hand. God told Moses and said, Moses, call Joshua. Lay your hands on him. Pour your honor. 
the anointing, everything in you, point it on point in life. He cannot double it. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But this is a man that came and said, I want the double of what you carry. I was in a prayer. We were in a prayer with uh, <coughs> our father-in-law one time. And he said, God asked us to ask what we wanted. And he was asking for the double portion in the life of Jesus. <laughs> I was beginning to laugh. He was asking for a double portion in the life of Elijah, not Elijah. He was asking double portion in the life of Paul. I was not saying double portion of all these people you are asking. What they carry self. <laughs> Praise God. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I got the dimension of how men ought to pray. How men ought to ask. How men ought to supplicate in the place of prayer. Thank you, Father. If Jesus told them, this kind goeth not out except by prayer and fasting. And somebody are telling you that uh, you cannot pray and you cannot fast. Brethren, these realms that we are occupying, we occupy it by power. Grace is what must manifest it for us, but it's by power we sustain it. Ah, is some, do you understand what I'm saying? Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Anyway, that's not where I'm going today. Thank you, Father. You are going to place a demand and there will be total answer over your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And the man of God said in verse 10, that is no problem. If this is what you want, it's a hard thing. I can give you what is in my hand for me to double it. It doesn't matter. That's why it is hard. And he said to him, that was as a hard thing. Nevertheless, this is the condition. Brethren, everything you are asking for has a condition. Anything, oh Lord, anything you want in your life, you want to be a graduate, it has a condition. You must be somebody can be able to burn the candle. You want to be a successful pastor, ah, it has a condition, except you want to do a kadaba. Ah, they said even that one has a, it has a condition. Because they might say, go and bring your wife or your husband. Go and bring your children. Go and bring this one. <laughs> God have mercy. Let somebody shout hallelujah. He said, if you see me, when I am being taken off, a man knew that he's about to be taken off. What can I say about this one? He knew he would be going. He never told Elisha he's going. Let me teach you here. It is the duty of you as you follow your, as you follow up to study the one that is ahead of you. Because there are so many dimensions of things that he will never let you know. But it is your own in the place of prayer to discover some certain great grace upon his life so that you can download it into your life and be successful you don't i mean we don't you don't work with some certain men ordinarily because you will laugh they will laugh with you and laugh your time out <laughs> thank you father bless the the name of the lord let me share this one with humility i work with some men of god they are older than me in age i always tell you that i i I mean, I accepted this work when I was from very young age. And when we are together, and they were asking questions, I kept quiet. I kept quiet because I don't have time. That question, that answers cannot be answered in the midst of the people I find myself. And after talks, after, after about 40 minutes, one of them said, Pastor, you are not saying anything. I said, because I have no answer. One of them said, after everybody left, one came back to meet me and said, Pastor, all those answers they gave, they were wrong. But I, I just left them alone. He said, that's why I've come to meet you. You have the answer. The Holy Spirit told me you have the answer. I said, yes, the answer is for me because heaven told me about the answer when you started it. But he has not told me to release it to anybody. He said, but give it to me. And I told him the answer. He said, yes, I know you have the answer. Brethren, anyone you follow, you must wait until what and see that you get the better of that person so that it can be double in your life. What you are bestowed upon is not enough because it is for you. It cannot be. It cannot. Elisha knew. He knew the ministry. He knew where the ministry. He knew where. He knew the nation that they are. He knew that for him to be able to be successful, he need double of what a man has used. 
Thank you, Father. I thought you were going to clap your hands for Jesus Christ. There was a condition. He said, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. That is to say, when you look at the context of that scripture, he said, if you see me when I'm taken from thee, as at that time, brethren, as a follower, there are people that have been put even in your hand. Leaders. God has put them in you so that you can grab something in their life. <laughs> Elijah never told Elisha that I'm going. Elijah never told him that you will not see me again. But it was even after the Jordan that he was able to wisdomly tell him and say, I have been released to you. Brethren, let every leaders here. We have been given as a servant to the people to serve them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Brethren, Elisha asks. The question is that at the crossroad, after collecting the double portion, brethren, he needed to go back. But he has learned a lesson. He has learned a lot from the master. Because the Jordan has already closed. He too was alone. He was alone to do the miracle. He looked at it left and right. Elijah was not around again. He was alone with a problem. The first number one problem is how to cross. He remember I have gotten the double portion. The mantle also is me. My master did not carry it on. It's a pity that Elijah, Elisha supposed to drop the double portion for another person so that they can double it again. But he died with it. And he has a question. When the water stop him from going, I pray every Jordan that has come to stop you, they will give way to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said, where is the God of Elijah? The God of my father, the God of our father, that are rotting miracles in those days, they are still alive here. And he struck the water and Jordan listened and they obeyed him. And that was when he knew that, yes, something was already in his life. Brethren, for you to know that there's an anointing in your life, begin to pray for the sick. Begin to pray. Dimensions of prayer. If they say there is one problem in the life of your husband, come on, take it up in the, on the front. Come and go ahead and begin to pray. Anyway, say, when you don't take no for an answer, we are so busy with the mundane things of this world. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can I hear you? Hallelujah. Let it be sounding so much. Hallelujah. Brethren, at the crossroad, what do you do? Do you call upon the God of Elijah or you call upon the God of your, of your, of your father? When question arises for me and you, where do you seek for answer? When there are problems here and there, when the Jordan arises and Roa, who do you turn to? Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. I'm about to close so that we can go to God in prayer. Job 1 and 2. The Bible made us turn. The man was struck. The devil struck this man through the permission of God. Brethren, he lost all. Everything gone. There was nothing, nothing, nothing remaining. But he told them, I know my Redeemer live it. Thank you, Father. I know my own Redeemer live it. What do you think God will do in heaven? He will tell you the devil I told you even if all that have denied me. As he has some wonderful daughters and sons of mine who still stand. He has already given the devil warning. I can give you everything but the soul of that man is intact. If you have not surrendered it to any devil, the devil has no right to take it from you. I be somebody faith up today. No matter what you are passing through, I command fire of the Holy Ghost to reign in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't forget number two. Don't forget the story of that man. First Chronicles chapter 4 from verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 4 from verse 1. It's about the story of Jabez. Jabez was a man who was born into sorrow. He was, he's a sorrowful man himself. The Bible made us, it made the, he placed a demand of God and he prayed. God made us to understand. Brethren, heaven answer him. And God established him, enlarged his clothes. He was not an ordinary man again. Brethren, well, who do you place demand on? Who do your prayers go to? Number three. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 38, from verse 1 to 5, 
Isaiah 38 from verse 1 to 5. It's about the story of the king called... Can you give us Isaiah? All right. The Bible made us to understand. I love this story very well. I love this story very well. When I read and read it, I discovered that there is nothing God cannot do. Amen. Uh, and that's why uh, I, I look at it and say, come on, I will name one of my sons Ezekiah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Praise God. Ha. Huh. That a prophet will come and knock your door and say, and tell a king and say, king, this sickness will kill you. Huh. you. You can imagine. And the man look at it and say, I don't need to argue with you. I know you are a prophet. You are spoken from the Lord, but he believed in himself that as a God that answered by fire. Oh my God. Somebody does not understand what I'm saying. That, I mean, a prophet, you know, this one is a genuine prophet. It's, they call it legit. Is it not legit? They call it when something is sure. Uh, what are you doing as if you are a hold man? Uh -huh. Praise God. That anything this one says is, is just like that. The man say, Oga, you are a king, but I need to tell you the truth. This sickness will hand you. He said, okay, no problem. That's your conversation. That's what God told you. But he has not told me he's going to I want to elite me in this world. Ah, <laughs> brethren, it takes you to agree with any negativity. I, 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 am I talking to somebody? It takes you to agree that you are gone. Brethren, the man looked at it and said, Okay, he went out, he locked the door and he faced the wall. And he was chanting. I can imagine the kind of Holy Ghost chanting that man will be chanting if it were. Praise God. I can imagine how that man will stand and say, come on, I don't allow you to go. Father, until he, he should have placed a demand and say, that same man, because I believe in the ministry, that same man that delivered the message, Father, send him back to me. The Bible said before Elisha could see that, God told him and said, come on, go back to the king. You are a servant, you must do your work. Tell him, I have heard this cry. The Bible says he cried to God. And God saw, God saw a genuine man crying on the altar. And he said, come and go back to him and tell him, I have not only healed him, I have had 15 more years to his life. He that read, wrote, cancel it again. <sighs> Brethren, something is happening in the realm. That until you enter into and tap into it, you might not be able to get it. They deny you, except you deny yourself. Hmm. Makato Kalagadaba. That same God that told the children of Israel, come and pack your things and get out of Egypt. It takes me only 40 days to take you to that Canaan land. It's the same God that look at them and say, come on, we just this is what you are doing. I have made it to become 40 years. He can do and undo. Amen. He can do and undo. He can decide. You might wake up this morning, no one sent in your post or neither in your account. But eventually you don't have an account. All of a sudden, he can just look at your life and say, I want to embarrass you. Come and look at a woman who is just looking around and say, who am I? And the woman will look at you and say, come on, come here. I don't want to mind your color. And look at your life and say, I make you to become a millionaire today. You can't, not only person, one person believe and say, Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Everything he ever told me, nobody, everything he told me, everything I have, I hold it onto it and I believe it. Not only believing it, I walk towards it by fire. <laughs> Masata Kalaba. Ah, and that's the reason why sometimes when they ask me questions, I have no answer. Because the way he operates with me is different. Thank you, Father. Let me give this one and then you go. John chapter, chapter 11. John chapter 11. From verse 1. It's about the story of Lazarus. The Bible says Lazarus was dead. He was gone. This is a testimony that triggered me, oh Lord. Lazarus was a gone man. And they have to wait for four days. This guy was already sinking. But eventually everything, the, everything inside Lazarus must have rotten. Because the, the smell of a dead person comes from the inside. <laughs> the kidney, everything, they were all gone. And when he finally arrived, he told the disciples, say, yes, that man is gone. But let's go and wake him up. They must have been looking at him and say, what's wrong with this man? You always put your throat where he... I said, come on, let's go and wake him up. They got there. The sisters of that look at him and say, oh God, if you have been here, we know it's a pathetic, this is a guy that is so close to you. All those things does not matter at all. The question Jesus asked him then was that, where do you lead him? I didn't say Joshua. I said John. John 11. John chapter 11. Thank you, Father. 
Ah, he said, where do we lead him? They took him to, what do you want to do where we lead him? That was the question. Brethren, when problem arises, who do you go to? In Ezekiel, go back to God. He never mind the prophet that came. When it comes to even our Lord, my master, my, the one that died for me, when he, when he got to the point of Lazarus, he looked at it and said, when you turn to John chapter 11, verse 41, verse 41, the Bible says he gave thanks. He looked unto God, he asked it. Look at a simple statement in John 11, verse 41. He said, Then they took away the stone because he already told them in 40 that said, Roll away the stone. They took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes. Where do your eyes go to when they're at crossroads? And he said, Father, do you still know that you have a father in heaven? Do you still know that it's a mom, it's somebody you can still communicate to? Ah, or you believe that when they say it is ended, it is end. It is not over until it is over. You don't give it up at all. And he said, I thank thee that thou hast had me. Ha -ha. There are two things I reason here. Thou hast had me. Number one, he has prayed and he believed God has had him. Because he already knew as he were coming that what Lazarus is dead. And he knew that what he has communicated with him, he has had me. Oh my God. Let's rise to our feet. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 14. We go to God in prayer for these just few minutes that remain. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 14. The Bible said, Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Hmm. He remembered the God of our Father. In my dialect, we call it Babawa. Thank you, Father. The God of our Father. Thank you, Father. It is not the God that my Father is serving, but the God of our Father. Where is that God? That God that showeth at every point. That God that answer by fire. We want to call upon that God. I want somebody to pray by fire, and I want somebody to make a demand today because that God, our Father, is available. Let's open your mouth and say, Father, thank you. Oh, you are the God of Elijah. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. Open your mouth and begin to pray to God. I have revealed some certain secrets of dimension of moving with him. Open your mouth and bless his holy name. We are Pentecostal. Oh, Lord, we, are, we, are no, we don't make noise, but we chant very well. Oh, Lord, we make demand. We pray. We are Pentecostal. We are not, we don't practice Catholicism. Brethren, we are Pentecostal. We pray. We take it by fire. We ordain me. Scripture have been ordained for me and you. Oh Lord, it's a way of the Lord. You cannot be silent at all. It's the God of Elijah. Open your mouth and bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Bless the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now we want to pray. Hallelujah. Elijah picked up the mantle. He knew that the mantle cannot just work. It becomes something that was just wrapped ordinarily. And he asked the man. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Ha! Huh? Where is that God that you are serving day and night? Where is that God that you call upon and he answer? Where is that God that if your belief system is still alive, let's chant and pray to him and say, Father, oh Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I make a demand right now. I don't know what you are asking for. Whether it's because of your wife, because of your husband, because of your children, because of your family, because of what you want to do this year. Oh Lord, I make a demand. Thou, the God of our Father, the God of Elijah that can appear to do the impossible is somebody praying Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Ah, that God that has been answered in prayer on this altar. Open your mouth and pray. Make a demand. Make a demand. 
Make a demand. Rakata kabagaba. What is that thing that is challenging you? Make a demand. Great God. Great God. Masataria Gosh. Leketeka Rakatakaba. Rokotoko Lakate. Leketeka Ragada Bosch. Limbra Kasataka Yadaga. Arakataka Yade Brigade Kelikata. Leketeka Leketeke Lobo. Rikataka Yadaka Labarabos. Mesataka Yadagaba. Make a demand. Make a demand. Make a demand. Don't think it is gone. It is not over until it is over. Why not make a demand? Why not make a demand? To the family of Lazarus, they thought all is gone. Come on, there is a demand that Jesus made on their behalf. Oh, to Ezekiah. Oh, Lord, they thought it is gone. Oh, God. God have to send that matter. God have to send that a, a prophet back. Why not make a demand? Ah. Oh, Lord, oh, oh, make a demand. The devil thought it is over for Job. Ayakatakaba. But Job believed in the Lord. Ayakataba. He knew that his redeemer lived. What are you passing through? Come on, make a demand. Right now. By the grace of the Lord, Shakata, Rekete Kelepa, Masataka Yadaba, Leprekese Tekelekete Brigabos, Masataka La Brigabos. Thank you, Father. 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 Shakata Karakata Katakayaba, Shekete Kelepra Kasatakaba, Legede Kalapraka Satakaba. Thank you, fresh your God. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. I want us to go now. Brethren, I have set aside some certain months this year that you are going to be on fire for God. Amen. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I've asked God some of the things I do by fire, by force. I quite understand that some of you might not, might be too hard for you to do. I want to put you into it. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I was praying with one of my prayer partner, and he said, Daddy, sorry, you are going to take the prayer today. I said, okay, no problem. And uh, I, we, I came there purposely because of him earlier, and I started chanting. I chanted for four hours, for four hours, four hours. And he, he counted four hours. Brethren, my shanting was more than that. Non-stop. Non-what? Non-stop. I'm telling you this one, maybe the first time or the second time. To operate some corridor, brethren, that is a greater hand you need upon your life. Don't believe in this bread and butter message. Am I talking to you, brethren? Don't believe in this message that makes when you get to where it's slippery and you just fall like that. No. Even when there is nothing. There is an abundance of heaven that is in your pocket. Ah, you don't operate by the account of that move it in the world. That is the scripture that has been stored for every one of us to operate in. It takes a man that on this verse and this corridor to make a demand on the scripture and bring it to pass in his life. Am I talking to you, brother? Your life, everything about you must be total for God. You must serve God as if you are about to die the next day. Even when the dead come, you are not you are ready to go to heaven. And that was what the dimension Paul operated. And Paul said, the Prophet Agabus told Paul and say, He that owns this bed, come on, don't go to Jerusalem. If you go to Jerusalem, you are going to be banned and thrown in the prison. He never allowed it to finish. He told him, I am not only ready because that God, that bed belongs to me. I'm not only ready to be in prison. I'm ready to die for the Lord. If your Christianity has not got into that place, the death will be moving you around. When you when have, can I tell you how many times they have brought food for me? How many times they are, I have died and I wake up? How many times many things have happened? They have pierced me and I will wake up. I will tell them, I will tell them, come on, I command, oh, oh my God, let me share this one prayer point. Say, Father! If you are ready, all of you should be in church on Sunday. Let's put it. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I take a I take an appointment for you on Sunday. Let's be here. Declare three days of fasting. Apart from the fasting that we are fasting, take a time for you to wait upon him. Very well. I say, Father, I want your manifestation even on Sunday. Brethren, we will pray. Brethren, it's a dimension that you will travel into your village while you are in you. 
that you wake up and you see yourself in your village. Brethren, don't call the pastor. What are you doing with you? Brethren, take a dimension and travel in the realms of the spirit and enter into that realms of your village. Oh my God. Some people will wonder and say, Pastor, you said you enter my village. Yes, I said sometimes I have gone to your village. I have do, I'm, brethren, we travel in the realms of the spirit. Amen. We travel in the realms of the spirit. You have an appointment somewhere before that day. Travel in the realms. Enter into that office. Even then they are going. If that day will not favor you, they will change that day because of you. Masatakashaka. Rokatakayaba. Let me use two minutes and say, Father. That from today, oh Lord, I enter into the heavenlies. Brethren, if you cannot enter the heavenlies, you cannot, you are not a candidate of the miracle. My father, brethren, let me tell you, listen, brethren, amen. Don't be a miracle seeker. It is the works of the children in the Lord that seek for miracle. Oh Lord, those who are hungry, they seek for bread. Brethren, that was the message Jesus was about to, was passing into David and the de devil, devil. You are using stone and bread for me. Right. We are more than that one. Amen. Amen. Ah, right. thumb bread because I've, I've been fasting. It is more than that one. Right. <laughs> Men that control the realms, they don't look for food. Men that control the realms, they don't seek for food. Shaketekeli pakataka yagaba. Sotoko lakatakaba. Leketekeli preko sotoko ligaba. Rakatakaba. <laughs> Turn this stone to bread. Jesus, look at him. But this boy, this boy has got, I've forgotten that I know when you are in the garden. Because the Adam and Eve allow it to happen. You think it's going to happen? You use food for them? You want to use food for me? Come on, get back to hell where you are coming from. Man, let the hell get back to where they, let the devil get back to hell where he comes. Brethren, let this one sink into your morals. When they come with evil thought to you, let them know that uh, you carry the anointing of heaven in your life. Your body is the temple of the Almighty God. That is scripture for you. He has no right to talk to you. Send him back to hell to go and meet 